we've just seen how to handle uh, partial fraction decomposition when we have repeated linear factors. What would happen if you were solving a uh, differential equation using the Laplace techniques and you got to capital X of S equals stuff where stuff was a little bit harder. It was this guy right here. And we happen to recognize that the bottom was a quadratic factor that was repeated because he's squared. How would we handle that? Well, great news. We can use what we've learned here for linear factors to do the partial fraction decomposition with repeated quadratic factors. So we're going to need s squared plus 1. Whoops, let me slide that down a little there. And we'll need s squared plus 1 squared. But as we saw above, what you need is we're going to keep these guys proper fractions. So we need a linear term up here, as plus b. And even though this really is a quadr quadratic squared or quartic, if we were to do cs cubed plus ds squared plus es plus f, some of that would be able to be absorbed into this term right here. So we really only need to focus on what the factor himself is, s squared plus 1. And so we need a linear factor up top, cs plus d. All right, getting a common denominator and then doing our partial fraction decomposition, we'll find out that s cubed plus 2s plus 2 is equal to the quantity as plus b times s squared plus 1 plus cs plus d. So to get a common denominator here, I just need to times top and bottom of this term by the quantity s squared plus 1. And let's see what happens. So we've got s cubed plus 2s plus 2 is equal to, let's distribute this and see what happens. So we've got a s cubed plus, um, I'm going to do it in a slightly different order. I'll do it in orders of s's. So b s squared plus a s plus b plus c s plus d. And let's go ahead and group on the s's. So s cubed times a plus s squared times b plus s times, and I like to underline them so I don't forget anybody, a plus c, and that leaves the constants to be b plus d. And so that has to be equal to s cubed plus 0s squared plus 2s plus 2, which could set up a linear system. You could say that um, 1a, so you could equate the like coefficients, but let's just go ahead and do that. So we know that a has to be 1. So let's see if we can do this without having to set up a matrix. Okay. Ah, the coefficient of the s squared has to be the same. So that tells me that b has to equal 0. Um, the coefficient of the s has to be 2. So a plus c has to equal 2. I already now know that a is 1. So that forces c to have to be 1. And 2 has to be the same as the constant term here. So 2 equals b plus d. And knowing that b is already 0, that tells me that d had to be 2. So our partial fraction decomposition, capital X of s would be s cubed plus 2s plus 2 over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And that would be worth a is 1 over s squared plus 1 plus because the b was 0. So oop, that's an 1s, that is. Thank you. Uh, plus c, we know it to be 1. S plus D was 2 over S squared plus 1 quantity squared. Okay. Um, good news is we recognize this first guy. If we were to do the 
inverse Laplace transform on him. We recognize him as cosine of t. We didn't even have a translation there. Uh, this one right here is going to be a little bit harder, but what we're going to do is we're going to break him up into two pieces using some baby algebra steps here. So we'll do this guy and that guy. And fortunately for us, there are two inverse Laplace transforms that are going to help us with these uh, repeated quadratic factors. So S over S squared plus one quantity squared looks a lot like this. So let's slide that up. So the inverse Laplace transform of S over S squared plus one squared quantity squared is going to be one over, everything's the same except now we've got K is a one. So one over two times K, which is one over two times T times the sine of T. So that's what this uh, purple one will work out to be. And lastly, we also have two over S squared plus one quantity squared. And if we do the inverse Laplace transform for that, we notice that he looks identical to this, except we can factor the two out front so that we now have our one. So we would get two times, recognizing that K is one again, one over two times one cubed times sine of one T minus one T times cosine of T. And, oh, even better, the twos will divide out and we will get simply sine of T minus T cosine of T. Okay, so if this had been our original guy right here and we needed to do his inverse Laplace transform, we break him down into his partial fractions. This first piece is easy to know and recognize. This guy breaks down into two smaller pieces that we can handle. So X of T, our final answer would be cosine of T coming from the first term, okay, plus one half T sine of T, coming from this piece, plus the last piece, the two's divided out, and we had plus sine of t minus t times cosine of t. So there would be our original solution if capital X of S in our Laplace workings was this guy right here. Okay, we'll let you stop there and work on the homeworks.